Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to continue our series of OSPF lessons and we're going to take a look at a couple of OSPF timers, specifically the hello and dead interval timers. There are a number of OSPF timers. The ones that we're looking at specifically today are the OSPF hello interval and the OSPF router dead interval. And the reason these guys are so important is that they are included in every OSPF hello message. And if you recall, the OSPF hello messages are used for OSPF to dynamically discover OSPF neighbors and also as a keep alive mechanism between between those neighbors once that neighbor relationship has been established. And the OSPF hello interval and router dead interval are going to play integral parts in both of those aspects. With the exchange of OSPF hello messages in order to establish an OSPF neighbor relationship, there are a number of criteria that need to be agreed upon. And two of those are these timers. It's the OSPF hello interval and the OSPF router dead interval. They need to be agreed upon for a neighbor relationship to even be considered. So they're important in that aspect. Also, they are directly related to OSPF convergence time, and we'll take a look at that later on in the lesson. Just a quick aside side here, um, the OSPF hello interval, and yeah, spelled like that, crushed together with, with the capitalization in the middle of the word, and the even uglier router dead interval. Those are terms that come directly from the RFC, the OSPF RFC, and that's why I'm using them in this manner. You may hear the OSPF hello interval referred to as simply the hello interval or the hello timer, and the router dead interval can be referred to as router dead interval, dead interval, dead timer. They all are the same beast. So here we show the definition from the RFC. So the hello interval is the length of time in seconds and both of these timers are going to be in seconds. It's the length of time in seconds between the hello packets that the router sends on the interface. Fair enough, it's how often an interface is going to send out hello packets. And as I stated earlier, it's advertised in the hello packets sent out this interface. The router dead interval is the number of seconds before the router's neighbors will do clear it down after they stop hearing the blah 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 okay the easier way to say this is it's basically just a countdown timer so the router dead interval is going to count down from whatever value you have it set to in seconds and if it reaches zero and has not received a hello message from that neighbor it will declare that neighbor down and again this is advertised in the hello packets both of these values are advertised in the hello packets and that is important because your neighbors must agree upon these values or a neighbor relationship will not be established got asterisk before these two terms Hello timer is technically not the hello interval and it's a bit of convoluted semantics. The hello interval is technically the value that is included in the OSPF hello message. Cisco iOS uses that value to set the hello timer. So they're going to be the same, but they're not technically the same. I don't think you're going to get tested on this in the Cisco tests. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, but technically they're not the same. This timer is fed from the hello interval value. And the wait timer is not the same as the router dead interval. Well, that's easy enough to figure out. It is fed from that value. The wait timer is the amount of time basically that a router will wait for the election of a designated router. So it is kind of interesting that that value is provided by the router dead interval. As you can argue that the wait timer has very little to do with OSPF convergence. But that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to bring those up and show you the relationship between the two and like I said the semantic acrobatics between the hello interval and the hello timer. Okay I've included this slide basically as just a reminder slash review not going to get into this deep. We're not going to go through the process in which OSPF selects a router ID other than to say that before you can exchange hellos you need to have an OSPF router ID specified either manually or through the OSPF router ID selection. Uh, enough said you can read this and we've reviewed this in other lessons and this slide is a bit of review as well but this is germane to what we're looking at today. So when OSPF devices exchange hello messages they are seeking to form an OSPF neighbor relationship in order to do so so they have to agree upon certain criteria and this is a list of those criteria. So they have to agree on the IP subnet including subnet mask. Yes, OSPF is a classful protocol. They have to agree upon the area. They have to be in the same area. The router IDs must be unique. You can't have two devices with the same router ID trying to form a neighbor relationship. Stub flags, not going to go into this. There's another lesson on all the various different types of stubs, but basically if you have one of the, the stub areas configured, your neighbors have to agree that they're going to run that same type of stub area. This is sometimes referred to as the area type. OSPF timers, that's our dog. This is kind 
kind of a misnomer because there are more OSPF timers than just these two. You'll see this in documentation as the OSPF timers. And when they're talking about it in a hello message context, they're talking specifically about the hello interval and the router dead interval. And those are the guys that we're going to look at today. And then there's authentication and then compatible OSPF types. This is covered in a different lesson. You can read the asterisk. Technically, network type does not have to be agreed upon. And there's a whole other lesson on how that works. Basically, these guys have to match. And that's what makes these OSPF timers, the uh, hello interval and the router dead interval important is that if they do not match, you're never going to get a neighbor relationship. If you don't have a neighbor relationship, you're never going to get an adjacency. If you don't have an adjacency, your OSPF routing process is going to be kind of screwy. And here we see the makeup of the OSPF hello message. And you can see those uh, criteria that we were just discussing are present in the OSPF hello message. So we have to agree on network mask, hello interval. That's one of our guys today. And then the router dead interval, uh, designated router, backup designated router. That depends on the OSPF network type. And the neighbor ID is the router ID of your neighbor. So you can see here what is exchanged in the OSPF hello and these two are definitely there. Okay, and just to show that I wasn't blowing smoke up your butt in the last slide, this is a Wireshark uh, packet capture and we're looking specifically at an OSPF hello packet. And you can see here the OSPF hello packet, the fields in there, hello interval is in there. In this case, it is set to 10 seconds. And then we got some other stuff down here. And what we're looking for specifically is the router dead interval. And that is set to 40 seconds. So you can see that these values are actually in the OSPF hello packets. So Cisco IOS is going to assign default OSPF network types to interfaces depending on that interface type slash protocol running on that interface. Uh, there's a whole other lesson that delves into this really deep. For any type of Cisco exam, I would commit this to memory. So not only does it assign a default OSPF network type, but each of those OSPF network types has a default hello interval and default router interval. So if we take a look at these broadcast has a default hello interval of 10 seconds and a default router dead interval of 40 seconds non broadcast is 30 seconds and 120 seconds point to point is 10 seconds and 40 seconds and then your point to multi point whether they are broadcast or non broadcast both set the hello interval to 30 seconds and the router dead interval to 120 seconds. Now loopback is a special type of OSPF network type it's run on loopback interfaces or looped that's L-O-O-P-E-D back interfaces. And because those uh, interfaces are not going to exchange hello messages, I mean, the loopback doesn't have anybody to talk to. It can't send anything out because it's not really a physical link. You don't have to worry about that. They do not have default values because they do not send hello messages. Now, the astute among you might notice a mathematical relationship between the default hello interval and the default router dead interval. And that is that it's four times the default hello interval. So really, you only have to memorize the first two columns here because if you know that the OSPF network type of broadcast has a default hello interval of 10 seconds you can do some quick multiplication by four to figure out what the default router dead interval is okay so let's uh, quit jibber jabbering about the theory and get into some hot CLI action so in this case we're taking a look at r1's interface series 0 slash 0 and the command to look at the hello interval and the router dead interval is to issue the show IP OSPF interface and then followed by the interface in this case 0 0 slash 0 so this is going to give us a ton of good information here. What we can see here is the network type is point to point. So if we remember that last slide, point to point has a default hello interval of 10 seconds. And we can verify that here. It is set to 10 seconds. And as you can see, the dead interval is set to four times that, which is 40 seconds. As I mentioned in that first slide, the router dead interval feeds the wait timer. So you can see that these guys are equal. So now what we've done is we've gone and we've changed the network type on this interface to non-broadcast. Now non-broadcast has a default hello interval of 30 seconds and multiply that by four and we get 120 seconds for the default router dead interval. And you might be looking at this right now and if you remember what the router dead interval is, it's a countdown that says within this amount of time, if I do not see a hello packet from my neighbor, I am going to declare this neighbor relationship dead. 20 seconds is two minutes. Yeah, look at me with my math skills again. That can be quite a bit of time and we will take a look at how you can adjust that if you want to a little bit later on here. So let's think about this for a second. Where do you think that we are going to change the OSPF timers, specifically the hello interval and the router dead interval? And don't say, well, in the configuration, dumbass. Yes, I, I understand that. 
Do you think this is going to be a global configuration command? Do you think this is going to be something that you configure under the OSPF router process? Or is this something that might be an interface level command? Well, the way that it works is that your router can have, and I say router, um, I should say device because you can certainly run OSPF on certain switching platforms. Uh, your OSPF enabled device is going to have multiple interfaces generally, and they might be different types of interfaces, or they might be, you know, even if they're all serial, some of them might be running frame relay, some might be running a uh, point to point protocol. And if we recall, iOS assigns default OSPF network types based on the interface type slash the protocol that it's running on that interface so you can't really do this at a global level because if you did it at a global level it change it for all of those and you saw that there are different timers based upon the network type and that would change those and break them for those neighbors you might think doing it under the OSPF process is possible you could do it on a neighbor by neighbor relationship uh, but the answer is that we're gonna do this under the interface so you need to know that when you are changing these timers you're doing them under the interface rather than at the OSPF process level or at the global configuration level. So here we go. This is the command that we will use at the interface level and is IP OSPF hello interval followed by the interval that you want to set it to in seconds. Now I just went over, you know, thinking about where we're going to configure it and all that. The reason that you want to do this is A, when you're configuring this, you don't want to look like an idiot and try and configure it in the wrong spot. And B, Cisco is very fond of giving you questions on their exams which say, you know, which of the following will change the OSPF hello interval and it'll give you the right command I'll say IP OSPF hello interval let's say six for six seconds and you'll see that on answer A and B and you'll be like what well that's the right command the difference will be whether it is under config for global config or interface or you know that's what you got to take a look for so not only do you need to know the command but you need to know which part of the uh, configuration that it is configured under Anywho, back to what we're looking at here. If we go to on R1 and we issue the do show IP OSPF interface 00 slash 0, I've just got this so that it's just capturing the timer so we don't get all that extraneous information. And we can see here that our hello timer is set to 10 seconds and the dead timer is set to 40 seconds, which is a default for a point to point interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under this interface and we're going to change the hello interval. And the way that we do that is we issue the IP OSPF hello interval. And let's take a look at the options here we have the option to set it to as low as one second or as high as 65,535 seconds. Now, if you've got a really stable network and you're concerned about the traffic that your OSPF hellos are taking up, it's uh, eating up your precious, precious bandwidth, then you could certainly set that to 65,000 some seconds. I would not recommend doing that. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and set it to six seconds. So we're going to send out uh, OSPF hellos out this interface every six seconds rather than 10 seconds. So now let's go ahead and verify what we we did and we just go ahead and issue that show IP OSPF interface command again and you can see here that we have successfully set the hello timers to six seconds so we've changed the hello interval and we've also changed the dead interval Cisco iOS and I think this is actually a good feature will change your router dead interval to four times the amount of the hello interval when you change the hello interval. So if I were to change this to 12, it would change it to 48. If I would change this to two, it would change this to eight. Again, I'm impressing you with my American math skills. What this does is it really maintains the four missed hello rule. So since we have changed our hellos to go out every six seconds, uh, four of those, we could miss them in 24 seconds. So if this did not change and it stayed at 40 seconds, your hello intervals would go out every six seconds and then it could take up to six point however many missed OSPF hello messages before it went down because that dead interval would still be stuck at 40 seconds. So I think this is actually a good thing that iOS automatically changes this. Get a little bit off topic here. If you get a quote unquote trick question and the um, CCIE lab is infamous for these where you might get something that says, uh, okay, I want you to change the dead interval on the OSPF link on series zero slash zero. I want you to set that to 24 seconds, but you cannot use the IP OSPF dead interval command. As we'll see in the next slide, that's how you can set the dead interval. So you're like, oh man, that's how I set the dead interval. How am I going to set this at 24 seconds if I can't use that command? Well, if you realize that changing the hello interval to one fourth of that would accomplish the same thing, you're golden. Anyways, moving on.